Blog Talk Radio. abound around the world, from strange lights in the night sky to ghostly apparitions passing from one realm to the next, from the great pyramids of Egypt to what lies beneath the depths of Loch Ness, from Bigfoot to Atlantis, they are all mysteries waiting to be solved. Join Laurie Phillips, Lauren Smith, Graz, and Billy Simmons as they search for the truth on Night Colors Radio. Like, um, 
you know, some of the tours are no drugs, no alcohol, some of the tours are vegan. Well, Paul McCartney, his tour, it's all vegan. And if a crew member is caught eating meat, even away from the venue on their day off, they will be fired. Good gosh. Uh, yeah, it was crazy the stories they told. Um, I'll tell you something. Was... I know there weren't no Texans on that road crew. I'm going to tell you right now, there's no way a Texan <laughs> would go without eating meat. <laughs> There's just not a I tell you, that. I know, that's right. It was fascinating, though. It was fascinating. <laughs> it was really good info. And then we all said, okay, goodbye. And we just walked back to our car and drove home and, <laughs> and called it a night. It was awesome, though. You know, it was a, it was yeah, a really cool, yeah, fun I, weekend. <laughs> I, I checked my phone. I've got a voice message, uh, uh, you know, text message that says, I'm on Tom Petty's tour bus. OMG. <laughs> And I answer, okay, LOL. <laughs> I totally yeah. didn't believe it. <laughs> like, most un, like, anticlimactic response ever. And I'm like, okay, here's your mom. Like, you raised me on I didn't believe days. you. I thought you were I, just, uh, just had too many brewskis or something and just piped some no, crap in there. And, no, no, ah! no. This happened last night. I was like, yes, yeah, Tulsi, you did not let me down tonight. And so, you know, we it, it was just a really full, fun weekend. We My best friend came all the way to Tulsa. She took me shopping. We got our hair done and everything. We go out and have a big, fun, full night ending with Tom Petty's tour bus or his road cruise tour bus. And then today we go to Tulsa State Fair and ride the slingshot which you'll just have to Google slingshot videos. Um, and so that's why I have no voice, because we went out last night and you can't hear anything, so you have to scream in people's ears. And then uh-huh. today, um, you know, we screamed on that ride, and then I went to church, and, it, and my church is very contemporary, and you, uh, you, you definitely sing loudly while they play really loud music, so... Um, yeah, I have no voice now, uh, but it was a really good, fun, full weekend. It was awesome. I almost yeah. had to miss this show for a Tom Petty concert tonight, but it didn't work out. So I'm here, and I'm really excited Aww. to get into our guest tonight. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you're here. I'm sorry you missed the Tom Petty concert, but we're all glad that. you're here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it is. Should have took up ten minutes of next week's show talking about the Tom Petty concert. <laughs> oh man, I'm that, just that's awesome. To see who, who she runs into next week? <laughs> I know. I, I guess that's the perks of living in a big city. It's no telling oh, who you're going to run into. It is. It's pretty nice. I'm finally living. You know, got out of my little small town, and I'm finally living. It's all good. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. Well, happy birthday early. Her birthday is next Tuesday. Y'all people that are on her Facebook, be sure to... Yes, happy birthday early to my mom, Lori, as well, because her birthday is the day after mine. So, mine was the best birthday present she ever got. Oh, yes, that's right. Of course I'm going to say that. Yes. I hate her. Oh, yeah. So, guys, how are you guys doing tonight? Uh, Billy's got a sick youngin over there, and how's she doing, Billy? Yeah, it's uh, she's out for the count right now, so hope hopefully wow. better uh, by morning. Okay. And <clears throat> I don't know what I have to add. I really, obviously, I can't top Lauren's story. Um, <laughs> no, I can't. You know, before either, the show so started, I'm not even going to try. No, I mean. <laughs> Grez tried before the show started. He was telling everybody how he was a roadie for the Glenn Miller Orchestra back in the day. But, you know. I so miss those days. Lauren will have to tell you who Glenn Miller was, yeah. Um, but, uh, oh, my God. I've never heard that story, Grez. Oh, my well, it's not my favorite time of life, but that's okay. I was... Anyway. Back, back, back in the World War II Army not, days, you know. Not, yeah, well, I'm not saying it. Graz is old, but anyway. No, Graz is not old. For all you single, He's good-looking not. women out there, Graz mm. is available, <laughs> and he is not old. There you are. I haven't li- have like him a hard time. Forever, you know. I mean, <laughs> That's true. I just I give him a bad time. He's not really that old. Um <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. I could tell you about my Doris Day roadie, roadie days, but that was another time, too. But that's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right, that's so what anyway. We're going to talk about next week. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Well, I, I'll tell you what. I am very excited about tonight's show, and I'm excited that Lauren had a really great birthday. That's wonderful, Lauren. I am just... That that's just awesome. Oh, okay. How about we go ahead and uh if there if no one has anything else to add, we're gonna go ahead and uh introduce our guest and bring him on. I'm anxious to talk to him. <laughs> Lauren, do you think you can scrape up another throat there to, Oh good, after all that screaming yeah. last time, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, I can do this. I'm drinking some hot tea. It's good. Uh, I am here for Night Callers Radio. Don't y'all ever say I'm not dedicated. I gave up Tom <laughs> Petty for this tonight. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Night Callers Radio continues the series of the North American Sasquatch Researcher. We welcome Christopher Milton from the foothills of the Ozarks in eastern Oklahoma. Christopher's journey began on a family hayride where he witnessed strange howls, powerful wood knocks, and screams resounding from the surrounding woods. Always curious about the subject of Bigfoot and having access to areas prone to sightings sightings reports, Christopher and his cousin Brendan began to accrue equipment with limited means and began to video their research. Although they have some fairly humorous videos, and they are humorous, um, they do actually. <laughs> they do actually take their a, a comedic Bigfoot, Bigfoot researcher. <laughs> yes. Go ahead. They do actually take their Bigfoot uh, study of Bigfoot very seriously. Christopher believes in integrity and honesty in his research, but is also inclined to have a great time doing it. <laughs> um, I seem to recall some beer cans uh, being smashed, and or, yeah. Um, to see Bigfoot hunting videos, please refer to the link below which I will put in the chat. And this is going to be a really great show, so hang on tight. For those that want to see Christopher's videos, they're at youtube.com, Bigfoot Hunting. 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 With no G on the end. Bigfoot Hunting. So, anyway. Um, uh, You're from Texas. What is going on right now? I know. (laughs) I go, why want to put a D on it? What can I say? Anyway, welcome, Christopher Milton, to Night Callers Radio. We're so glad to have you. How are you doing tonight? Doing good. How are y'all doing? We're doing great. Obviously, yeah. you can tell. Yeah. <laughs> even without Tom Petty. Yeah, even That's without true. Tom Petty. <laughs> Maybe we can get him a sub next week. I don't know. <laughs> so we're we're glad, very very glad to have you on the show. We have not had anybody from Oklahoma yet, and it, now I'm going to tell you, it is tough to find Oklahoma researchers. Either they're laying low, or there's just not that many of them. Or I know there's Bigfoot in eastern Oklahoma, so I'm so glad that we finally got someone that has been doing some research in eastern Oklahoma. So uh, is that is that where you do your research at uh, in eastern Oklahoma? Or are you more central, or where where about? You don't have it's to like, name a city. Right, it's um sort of like east central Oklahoma. I'm um right by Interstate 40. Okay. Okay. Yep. Right, right there on the border of Arkansas. <clears throat> oh, that is eastern. Mm-hmm. That's as eastern as it gets. <laughs> <laughs> yep, any further than I'd be an Arkansasian, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, my, fir- my first question for you, Christopher, is uh, have you always had an interest in uh, Sasquatch? Big Oh, Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, since, you know, I was a kid, I, you know, always, anytime I saw anything coming on television about Bigfoot, you know, I was there, you know. And um, I actually... I actually had an experience with what I believe was a Bigfoot when I was 11. Okay, do tell. Do tell. Okay. Um, well, it was, um, I was actually in Arkansas at that time. I was I lived there in Arkansas um, by a place called uh, Sugarloaf Lake, Arkansas. And um, it's basically, it's a, there's a, it's a lake there, but it's also a mountain range, the Sugarloaf Mountain. And um, what it is is uh, there's, there's a, 
most of it's in Arkansas. There's a little bit over in Oklahoma because it's right on the border there. And um, there's a road that runs in between the two sections there because the, the main big section drops down into a valley, and then another, the, the, the next section pops up over here to the west, which extends over into Oklahoma a little bit. And um, my stepbrother and I, we were um, going hunting on that road, one day, so we were driving down through there on our motorcycles, and we looked over and saw this road that led down in there. It was like, hey, you know, that looks like a good spot. We should go check that out one morning. So on this particular morning, um, we drove down in there, and we got down basically. We weren't right at the bottom of the mountain. It was over, uh, you know, over to our west there, probably, I don't know, 100 yards or so. And when we pulled down in this clearing there, um, we were we just got off our motorcycles. We were loading up our shotguns. And we were discussing where we were going to be so we wouldn't be shooting at each other, you know. And, um, yeah. about that. <laughs> and, and about that time, here comes this god-awful scream, howl, yell type sound from up on the side of the, of the mountain there. And um, we looked up there, and there was a, some rock bluffs up there. And standing in front of the rock bluffs was this dark figure, you know, and it was kind of sitting there, it was kind of waving his arms a little bit, it was weird, and, and and my stepbrother, he looks at me and he says, that's Bigfoot, let's get out of here, so we hop back to our what? He said what? And he said, that's Bigfoot, let's get out of here, oh. you know? yeah, and so we did, and we never went back there, you know, because that was, it was fun, you know, because, you know, even though it seemed shows about him, and some of those documentaries were kind of scary, you know, um, we just, you know, never, we've never seen or heard anything like that before. And okay, now, it, Chris, Christopher, can you uh-huh. uh, back away from your phone a little bit because you're kind of oh. overmodulating? I don't want to hear I all this. You. I got you. Well, I told you I get a little excited and I'll start talking. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. I get the same way. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. the thing was at a distance of about. 400 yards, probably three or 400 yards up the side of the mountain. So we couldn't see any detail, you know. It's just obviously that it was something up there dark, furry looking, and you could see that it was standing on two legs, and you see arms waving in the air. And, and you know, <laughs> we never went back there as kids, of course, you know. I'd really like to go yeah. back there now. Um, but that was my first experience with, you know, and I, you know, and it was at such a distance that, like I said, I could see no detail. So, was it Bigfoot? Well, I can't say for sure. It wasn't close enough to see, but I, I don't know of anything else in those woods, even a bear, that would have cared that we were down there in that valley that would be standing on two legs and would have made a sound like that. You know, like that scream, yell, howl sound that it made. Um, looking back at it and thinking about it, you know, I just kind of, if it was a Bigfoot, you know, I think it was maybe we were getting close to maybe a family group in there, maybe fed it down for the day, and that one was either warning them or warning us to get out of there. Uh-huh. Possibly, you know. I mean. Yes. Okay, so, Christopher, I gotta, I gotta stop you for a minute. Are you on a speakerphone? No, no, I've got a, I've got a Bluetooth headset on. Okay. It is still it really like too loud. Up. It is. It is just. It's uh, not just loud, but distorted. And I, I really? promise you, I want to hear everything you have to say. And it's, just, it's like you're okay sometimes, and sometimes you're a little overdriving there. So let's. All right. Well, here, let me just um. Actually, let me um. You've got a, this pop. Oh, I'm doing it too. I'm doing right. it too. Oh, my God. Okay. It could be just a bad connection on Blog Talk. Um, I don't oh. know. Um, I, can, I can try switching over to my phone and then take the headset off. I think that might help. Okay. Hmm. All right. All right. It's just the usual Blog Talk teething issues every week. <laughs> yes. Yeah, if it isn't I've one thing or another, and I forgot to pray over this show in Jesus' name, I pray. Yeah, we just do the show, the show in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. You, all right, how are you doing now, Chris? You got it together now? So. 
Uh, well, I just yeah, I just turned my phone. I turned the headset off. I'm just talking through my phone now. Oh my that. gosh, it is just like a world of difference. Really? Oh okay. my goodness! Yes, yes, <laughs> it's, it's good and clear now. Wouldn't you say so, Billy? It's a lot clearer. Yeah, it is. Yes. Okay. What about me? Am I still over modulating too, or? No, you're fine. Right. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. All right. After the I don't feel so bad about my Comcast problems now. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> okay, right, after the Arkansas right. thing, do you mind repeating what you said after the Arkansas thing? Because I want to be sure I hear all this. I don't want to come back and ask you questions you've already said because I didn't hear what you said. Okay? Okay, or, sure. Okay. Now, do you want me to just start uh, from the beginning again? or? No, no. I got to Arkansas, okay. uh, the very first experience. But where you went from there? Oh, okay. Well, like I said, that was when I was 11. And um, when I was 12, moved back to Oklahoma, back to um, our hometown there. And uh, really nothing, I, I'd had no further experiences um, until, or or heard of anything Bigfoot related until I was like, I guess about 15. Um, mm-hmm. A good friend of mine um, and some, some of, um, and a few of our buddies, were, they were, they were, uh, he told me, this is a story told me, I felt like he told me, and um, he said that um, they were, basically they were down there partying um, on the creek, and him and about four other people, and him and one other guy, well, the group was up here, they at about, I don't know, maybe uh, a quarter mile or so from, from this creek with this little bridge, low water bridge, and um so they they had slipped off from there because they, they they had all you know not to be um, too graphic or whatever but they had all chipped in to buy a bag of weed and they slipped off down there and smoked one by themselves. Uh huh. So, so um, they 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 were sitting there on the bridge talking and smoking that joint and um he he said they heard something walking up towards them you know and they figured oh man they found us you know and um, yeah. so when they both turned and looked. And he said, basically, there was there was a Bigfoot standing right there, about probably 15, 10, 15 foot away from him. And it was, of course, dark. There was no street lights in this area or anything. So I think he said there was a little bit of a moon because he said he could see the outline of it. Uh-huh. And he, said he, could, he could tell it was covered in hair. And it appeared to be probably about seven foot tall. Um, I actually have a video on, on this on, on my channel there describing this because I got with him, interviewed him. Um, and one was just an interview. The next time it was a recreation, and I kind of showed about how far, the, like the shoulders were, and how tall in comparison to myself. And I'm six four, so um, I actually wow. didn't even transition to a scene from the very same spot, um, showing the difference between me and how big this thing would have been. And he said, he, I asked him, you know, could you see any detail? Could you see the face? You know, could you see the chest? You know, could you tell there was hair on the chest. He said, no, no, it was too dark for that. But he said the thing was just standing there, staring at him. And he said that um, as soon as they turned and looked, you know, they both took off running. And when they, you know, got back to the group, uh, the other, the other, the other three up there, they were telling him. Of course, they were making fun of him, saying, uh-huh. hey, you know, yeah, y'all just messed uh-huh. up. You know, the face, you know, what most people would say. And um, yeah. the point about that is, see, he was my my friend was so I don't know. He he don't. He doesn't ever want to tell anyone this story right. because of that, it, because of the ridicule. Um, now, the other guy, he was so well, scared. Well, they might have thought it was, the, you know, the, uh, also, you know, the fact that what they were doing when they had the fighting doesn't exactly <laughs> lend credibility to, you know. Yeah. Right. I'm just it, saying. It, right. <laughs> right. Right. But, you know, yeah. uh, he's told me the story a few times. I've got him to tell some other people. And, you know, he's never changed it. Um, the only thing was he told me it was in one location. And what it was was um, he said it was in Slab Holler. Well, it turned out it wasn't in Slab Holler. It was in Booger Holler, which is where I live up through here. And I only wow. found that out during the recreation. <laughs> Even when I was interviewing him, he did, you know, <laughs> we did that. I, he didn't. I said um, Slab Holler, but, you know, he did. He was, like, you know, kind of confused, but he just he didn't say anything until – I told him we're going to go do the recreation, and, and I said, so we need to go down there 
because this was up right up from his house a little ways, and, that, and that's why I thought that's where you know that that makes sense because you know they were just right up the road from his house. But he says no, he said it's down here. We gotta go down here. And I'm like, what? You mean it was down here all this time? Twenty five years, I thought it was over there, and it was right up here from my house. You know? Yeah. And, <laughs> And so, so but, you know, the way that, like I say, he, he didn't even want to be seen on the video, his face or anything. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I, I believe him. And, and, and the other guy, like I said, was so scared that when they drove back through there, everybody was saying, all right, if y'all saw that, slow down. Let's keep it still around, you know, wanting to look. This guy floored it. I mean, he took off. He would not, and to this day, he won't say a word about it, you know, refuses to talk about it. So... You know, I, I I believe them. They saw it and they know what they saw. You know, it wasn't a person. He said, no way that was a person. It was just too tall, you know, too broad, and he could see a hairy outline all the way around it. So um, that kind of ties in, though, with what happened here that, that I experienced. Um, well, and, and see, we weren't on a hayride. It was, we were, they, um, my cousin Brendan's family was hosting a party, a Halloween party. And okay. they were giving people hay rides back here. Um, it, it's actually our neighbor's pasture over there, just just behind our land here. And um, and and we were all set up out there. My cousin Brendan, myself, our cousin Gerald, and his son Brandon. We were all set up out there to scare people when they drove around see, with the with the hay ride. Oh, lovely! So y'all were hiding in the dark, basically. <clears throat> right. Well, well, no, we had a couple tiki, tiki torches going, burning. And uh-huh. we had a little car going, which was all part of our little skit that we were doing. Oh, okay. And, but what had happened on that was, now this was on October 20th of 2012, and what they'd done, they, they brought the little kids around first, like the younger kids, you know, and just drove them through. They didn't even stop. See, they were supposed to stop, and we was wondering what was going on, you know, why didn't they stop, you know? And uh-huh. um, But then we found out it was just little kids. Well... We could hear little kids screaming, but, you know, we didn't realize it was only little kids. And um, so all the way, they they, take, they took two turns around the field, and, you know, both times those kids were screaming, you know. And, and I don't know if that had anything to do with what happened, but um, what happened was after those after they drove out of the pasture, Cross Creek was headed back up here to the town, um, we were all standing around talking, you know, and, and um, I think even... Brendan had called his dad to find out why they didn't stop. You know, that's when we found out it was just a little kid. And um, I don't know, it was probably maybe 10 minutes or so after they had left out, we started hearing this loud banging sound coming from east. Um, and we have railroad tracks that run right through here. And I was thinking, you know, when we first heard it, I thought, man, you know, they must be working on the railroad tracks down there because, I mean, it was a loud, powerful sound. And, yeah. you know, I was like, kind of weird. It's Saturday night, and they're, you know, out here working the railroad tracks. You know, it's kind of weird. And, um, well, Not probably. Like right, right, you know, because we couldn't see any lights or anything from that direction. You know, but it was quite a ways down. But, you know, I figured if they were out there working, they'd have it kind of lit up or something, you know. But, you know, we didn't really think much about it. And this went on for maybe, I don't know, two or three minutes. And then all of a sudden, the howl started. And they were, the, I don't know, I, I say so, something similar to the Ohio house. house. Yes. <laughs> and um, it's similar to that. And um, that went on now, again, for two, three, four, five minutes, you know, and, and <laughs> I started howling back at them, you know. Oh, my goodness. You didn't think it was a Bigfoot at the time? Well, or? You know, <laughs> At this point, I wasn't really sure, but then I was like, you know, that. then I got to thinking, yeah, that, that must be them, and, and I'll tell you why in a moment. Um, but, okay. you know, I feel there was a little bit of, well, I don't know, you know, but I just started howling back. They kept howling, and it got sort of, I don't, you know, uh, sort of agitated sounding or or anxious sounding in the house, you know. I mean, it, it was really excited, more or less, you know, and... So after that went on, like I say, another two or three, four minutes, all of a sudden just down the tree line, because we were at the very bottom of the hill, right at the tree line of, of the hill in, in this pasture, and over in the next pasture, because it's separated by a fence right there, and over in the next pasture, this right, and it had to be right there along the tree line, a scream came, you know, 
well, you know, uh, I mean, the only way I can say it was, you know, that definitely was a Bigfoot, you know, because nothing <laughs> else would, would make, yeah. you know, a sound like that. And I don't know, that that happened over there, and then a couple, two, three minutes later, right up the hill from us came a wood knock, and then everything stopped. Now, you know, I wrestled around with this in my mind for two or three weeks after that happened, thinking, well, now, they were throwing a party. Could that have been people out there knowing that we were doing that and going to mess with uh-huh. us? You know? And the more I thought about it, I mean, I tried, to, I tried to look at every angle on it, and I was thinking, okay, if that was someone out there, they would have had to have been way down there, down the railroad track somewhere. They would have had to have someone over in this other field and then someone up the hill above us to make this work. And there's no way a person could have made that screen here and went up the hill in that amount of time and made that wood knock. Right. You know, it's just impossible. So there would have had to have been three groups of people, like probably two or three people, because there was two or three different ones making howls back over there. And, um, and like I said, that had two or three people over there, one person over here, one person up here, all set up just to do that and then just stop and nothing else. It just yes. didn't make sense, you know. So I was like, that has to be, you know, a, a group of people. And, you know, <laughs> What I come to think, what I realized after thinking about it some was that, you know, the, um, those banging sounds we heard that I thought was something going on on the, on the railroad tracks down there, that was actually wood knocks. But that was no baseball yeah. bat hitting a tree sound. That was a tree uh-huh. hitting a tree sound. It was that loud yeah. and powerful. Wow. So wow. It, it was actually after that, that in December of 2012 that we um, just uh, went back there and did the first, like, investigation out there. Um, and, you know, the thing is, you know, um, my my there was other people in the field down there with us that night. And um, his actually Brendan's dad was right down there. When I started howling back at, at him, his dad howled at me, thinking we were just messing around, you know. Uh-huh. The reason why was he had a generator down there running some lights for his area that he, he was set up in. So he never heard it, you know. And Brendan's dad, like, you know, when Brendan told him about it, he's like, you know, Matt, no, you know, you're crazy. That was no big pussy. You don't believe in him at all, you know. And, <laughs> <laughs> We've been there, done that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, he, he thinks we're crazy for going back there and doing it. But um, what I was saying, the reason when, that, when those howls started, I mean, like I said, at first I was thinking, Oh man, somebody who you know who's down there, you know. But then I got you know, it's like no wait, it's not a person. And yeah, what it was like about a month earlier, like around September first or so, I had um I went back in the woods, took a walk back there. It was about I think I left out about nine, came back um, to the creek down here, which is right at the our property line, and then our neighbor's pasture over there. And I started making some house when I got to the creek, and 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 um thinking, you know, I'm going to mess with my cousin Brendan up here. He's going to hear this. And the next day, he's going to be like, man, you won't believe what I heard last night, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I couldn't believe what I heard is what happened because I made that three howls. And after my third howl, something howled back in the same area that those howls and the wood knocks came from on October 20th. Oh. Yeah, and um, so you know when all that happened, it just take but a, you know a second to think. Wait a minute, you know that's exactly the same sound, and 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 the howl it made was exactly what I was doing that Ohio house, you know type howl, and um, on September, and then that's like again that's what they were doing. So it took me about a second to be like, wait a minute, no, 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 that's that's not that's that, that's not people down there. That's you know that has to be Bigfoot. You know? Okay. So. Um, <laughs> I heard the scream again one time after that in, uh, I think, around early November, I believe. I was back there walking um, on the other side of the railroad tracks, and I was on top of this little hill over there, and it was like a clearing, and I could see across to the to the hill over there that we were camped out at the bottom of the, in October. And I don't know if it saw me or, or if it even had anything to do with me, but I heard a scream, the same scream again. And, of course, every time that this has happened, 
I didn't get anything. I didn't, I didn't record it. Um, on October 20th, <laughs> I actually had my phone in my pocket, you know. <laughs> I was just so excited about it that I never, I, you know, and I, you know. Yes, I know that. I, yeah, if you're just, no, you're that's just never in the happened moment. Before. Right. Oh, no, I'm, that's never <laughs> happened. <laughs> 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 Ever since then, we've tried making house, and we've not got any response. Anything except one night I did a scream, and there again, we didn't have a camera. My cousin Brent and I just drove back there across the pasture and was kind of just talking about, you know, what we're going to do the next time. And we thought we'd go back there and, you know, just drive across the pasture and park. And, and I made a scream, and something screamed back. And, and then again, you know, I didn't have anything with me. And, and it was after that that every time I go back there now, I've got something recording, either audio or a camera or something. <laughs> You know, there's too much good stuff that I missed. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I want to be truthful with you, Christopher. That's happened to me. It'd be like we'll get to an area, and I'm going to set up, and I'm in the process of getting everything out of the car and fixing the setup, my bionic ear, and I got one of those little digital. And that's when we'll get the vocal. It will be the most awesome vocal you ever heard in your life. And I'll get all set up and go, please do it again. Please do it again. No. <laughs> I guess it's just like a warning, you know, to the others. There's somebody here, you know. I don't know what the vocal means, but it would be just like the most awesome vocal while I'm getting the equipment out. And it's just the way it is. It's almost mm-hmm. like you've got to have everything up and going. As soon as you pull out, jump out of the car. I mean, you look like a clown car. Everybody <laughs> with their equipment and, and trying to get everything up before that first vocal. I, we've even heard the first vocal before the engine went off. You know, like, was that a vocal? Crap! Yeah. You know, and uh, uh, yeah. But anyway, continue. We're really enjoying your your uh, uh, telling of your experiences. So uh, go ahead and continue. You're doing a great job. Okay. Well, uh, appreciate that. Um, Actually, now, in this, let's see, when was it? Yeah, yeah last winter, or was it early, early spring of this year? It may have been early spring of this year, actually. Um, I actually did catch something. It wasn't a vocalization. Um, I had actually went into the woods to retrieve uh, our trail cam that we had set up, and I had it set up just inside the wood line, about maybe 20, 30 feet inside the wood line, and um, on this sort of like a trail, you can see where it's, you know, uh, well, our neighbor where it has cattle, and you can see, you know, it's where they had come in at, and also where you can tell the deer and stuff to walk down through this, you know, trail. And um, I went to retrieve it, and as I got close to it, all, right up the hill to me, to uh, uh, back towards the west, but up on the hill came a wood knock. And this time I did have, you know, like I said, because I always make sure from now on that, uh, you know, I always have something recorded when I go in the woods, um, even sometimes walking you know, like if I'm walking across the pasture or whatever, even not even in the woods, I'll have something recording. And um, and sure enough, caught a wood knock, and it was loud, distinct. You can hear it plainly on the video. Um, and wow. after that happened, I, I was just using my phone to record. And um, so I set my phone in this in this limb that came up, kind of you know, wide up from the side of the tree, and I stuck it in there, and it stayed put. And while I was taking or getting the trail cam unlocked and and everything, and um, it almost looks like I can't be certain. I mean, because it was, you know, my the phone was not on any kind of zoom or anything, just you know, wide angle or whatever. And um, up the hill, um, there can, you can see something in the video while I'm getting the trail trail cam off um, that looks like something may be peeking out from behind a tree. But now it was really, really windy that day. I mean, we were having 20, 30, sometimes 40 mile an hour wind gusts. Um, yeah. In there and. I mean, it, it was actually so bad that I didn't stay in there very long that day because there was, you know, a lot of trees up here creaking and moaning above me. And, I, you know, I was, there were some sort of dead ones that I was afraid one of them might, you know, fall and hit me on the head. Um, but, after, okay, when I, after I heard the wood knock, I started getting the camera down. Um, I started making some howls, and, um, and I heard another wood knock come from up the hill, which I figured out later when I reviewed the video was in the same direction of where I saw something possibly looking out from behind a tree, but I really, I can't tell. It could just be shadows from a tree moving, you know. 
Um, yeah. But it was odd that I did hear a tree knock come up that way. And uh, after after it did that, I made a tree knock, but then there was nothing else, you know. And and even, you know, I even thought the first wood knock that I heard, and even that second one, you know, possibly could that have been trees banging together in the wind. But uh-huh. you can hear it. Not you never hear it again. Right. Yeah. You, you, it, you don't hear that, that. That's right. not... Yeah, that's that's not very common for two trees to bang against each other and make that sound. It's well, right, I guess it's good, that. but yeah. Right. But you but know, I'm glad to see that you're you're trying to debunk everything that you're hearing. You know, and if you're not oh, right. absolutely sure it was a bigfoot on there, you're saying <laughs> you're not absolutely sure, and I like to hear that because that's the or trying that's to post a block important. squash or something moving off in the distance. That's the squash. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I didn't even see it, you know, until I got home and reviewed the video. I didn't even know that was going on up there. That's um, the way it usually happens, too. You don't right, know right, even 50, that there 50. was a Bigfoot in the area until you get home and you look at the video and go, oh, my God, I was being followed. You know, yeah. see a blob here, a blob there, you know something's following you, and uh, you you didn't even know they were there right? until you right. get home and look at the video. Um, and you know the way I look at it is, unless I get close enough to film one, no one's going to going to take my word for it because no one knows me personally, so they don't yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. And I I can say that I knew know they're back in here because of the the stuff that we've had happen. You know, there could be nothing uh-huh. other than that. I mean, we've right. we've got rock clacks recorded, and the first time was on a cold January night that went back there for you know I think we was only back there maybe an hour and a half, hour and forty five minutes. Hmm. And um, it actually happened. I had the camera set up in, in one location, and we were about, I don't know, 75 yards uh, to the west. And I was, of course, making some howls and stuff. And that night I did hear something moving up there on the side of the hill. I heard something moving through there. But, you know, I was expecting that, okay, I'm going to make some howls, and they're going to respond, you know, and that never happened. So I didn't know we had anything, you know, captured. When I got home, reviewed the video um, for, I don't know, it was about – 20 minutes before the video ended or before I got there and, and took So, I mean, it happened just before I walked up there and got the camera. And um, you could hear it for about 40 seconds. There's um, rock clacks going on. And, and and then, and this was January January of uh, 2013, and I didn't even know that was a thing. I, you know, when I first heard it, I thought, wood knocks, you know. But then I got to listen, and I'm like, no, that's not wood knocks. That's, that's rocks, you know. Um, uh-huh. I actually, Brendan and I went back um, – Oh, about a week or so later, and uh, try to recreate the sound with him taking a rock and banging it on another rock out there. And you know, from from standing out there, I thought, man, that sounds just like what was on the video. You know, that was it. That was rock class. And um, I've got that recorded several times. You know, got some other wood rock songs. Um, we've even had um, trees go down when. You know, they shouldn't have probably went down because, like, <laughs> especially, now, there was one time we did have a storm moving in and the wind was blowing, but it, it wasn't blowing that hard. Not hard enough to push down this big tree. That, I mean, you could tell it was a big tree. And that was one that I actually believe, and I actually did title that Bigfoot mess with um, our camera and pushed the tree down. And that was because we did catch something on the GoPro, which was aimed at our strobe lights we had set up in the tree. And, um... And you can see something for just a second come in front of it and block out all the lights. And, you know, then it, and then wow. that something is pushing limbs up in front of the camera. And that GoPro has a little red LED that flashes when it's recording. And it lit up the, the leaves red. And now the limb was down a couple of feet or so below the camera, but they were long enough that if you push them up, it would go in front of the camera. And now, you know... <laughs> I don't know, what, you know, why that, you know, any, I don't think, there's nothing else I could think of that would pull, could pull their limbs up in front of the camera or why they would if it was something like a raccoon yeah. or a possum. They would have mm-hmm. just climbed up the mm-hmm. I mean, so. But you know, I've seen how, that before. Are you talking about on the game camera? No, this was on the, this was caught by the, by the GoPro on this one. And, oh, you know, okay, it's, okay. It's not yeah. Not vision, so yeah. You don't, you, know, you can't see and there's no way to lighten it. I've had people try and, uh-huh. and I tried, and I couldn't lighten it up. For, for when I saw something walk in front, you know, completely block all the strobe lights. And from what it looked like to me, from what I was estimating the top of the head to be, it had to be as tall or taller than me. And, uh-huh. you know, there was no way to 
brighten it up. Just, I thought the strobe lights in the background could maybe if you could lighten it up and show a you know an outline of a figure, but it, it can't. It's easy. It can't. It's too dark. So. Now, what was the idea of the strobe light? Okay, well, I got that idea from when we were out there that night in October because we had fire going. You know, we had the tiki torches going and we had a little little tent fire going. And I, you know, I was just trying to figure out what started them making all that racket that night. Uh-huh. And uh, you know, everything from the kids screaming to maybe possibly they saw the fire flickering on you know on the trees above. You know, and you know, we had to check it out. You know. So the strobe lights were to mimic that effect of light flickering on 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 the tree. So I always have them pointing upwards, you know, um, towards into the top of the tree that I'm hung in, so that it flickers on the leaves and limbs and stuff and makes them look kind of sort of like it's moving, you know, because you know how the strobe light effect will work on things like that. And um, so that was what that was for. And I've used it every time because I felt like they got to know that that was us, you know, out there and would come to in, and check us out. And several times, you know, we've got, like I say, several of our videos. And, and every, well, every video shows something that we've found. You know, there's been other times nothing's happened. Um, but that, to me, that was a signal let them know, you know, hey, it's us, we're here, come, you know, mess with us. You know? That's an interesting idea. I kind of like that. It's it is. Very interesting. I, I have yeah. to say that's the first. I've never heard that of all the... <laughs> Researchers I've interviewed in the last five years, I I just I've never heard of that. But that's interesting. <laughs> I like I like Bobo, you know, finding Bigfoot because he comes up with all these off the wall ideas, you know, and that's what I try to do. I think <clears throat> anything you're think thinking trying, outside you know? the box is what you're doing, and that is oh, so is that like a battery operated strobe light from a camera or something, or what? I, I'm sorry, what was that? Is that like a battery operated? Uh, Strobe light oh. from a camera or something, or what? No, no, I got them in Halloween. Um, like in, let's see, in two, well, it was actually, yeah, in 2012. Um, we had went back in the woods and set up a little, um, set up where my campsite, uh, campsite area is back here on, on my family's land, uh, back in the woods. And we had used them back there for that. And the reason why I noticed about, or thought about using them was we'd had two set up facing that, you know, that little plastic or, or whatever, that little spider web stuff you stretch out, you know? Right. Uh-huh. And, yeah. And we had these little spiders stuck in that, and we had one one to the right, one to the left, pointing upwards at the spider web, and it made it look like they were moving, you know? Uh-huh. And that's where I got the idea. I was like, oh, you know, if we use three or four strobe lights pointing upward into the tree, it'll make it, you know, look like it's moving, just like fire would flicker and move, you know? Uh-huh. And so, so that was um, where I got the idea to use them. And they were, I got them at Walmart. They were, I don't know, like five bucks a piece. They run on three AA batteries. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you can vary the speed. So, um, you know, and, and I, I believe, like I said, I, I think that, you know, because that lights it up really well. I mean, we can go out in the middle of the field and you can see them over there lit up, like even in the summer, you know, when the leaves are all uh-huh. on the trees. And you can see it's lit up over there. So that's why I thought, you know, it's a great beacon. You know, hey, come check it out, you know. Exactly. Exactly. Um, well, we're, we're we're at the mid-mark, so we're going to go ahead and, and go to break. And when we come back, I have some questions for you, and I think probably Graz May and Billy May. And, uh, but uh, we're going to go ahead and go to break. I'm going to was going to play a different song, but I think I'm going to play Tom Petty for Lauren, and that the song is appropriately named "Birth Flash of Freedom." <laughs> so we're, Rub it in because she you had go her first flash of freedom last Saturday night. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to go ahead and go with that, and folks, we'll be back in about six minutes and 52 seconds.
are back, and that was Tom Petty and First Flash of Freedom. Uh, tonight, our guest is Christopher Milton from Bigfoot Hunting, and he is from Eastern Oklahoma, and we're going to get to him in just a minute. I'd like to make a, uh, an announcement. Uh, Night Callers Radio is doing a series on the North American Sasquatch researchers, and if there's anyone listening that is interested uh, uh, on being a guest on our show and would like are a researcher and would like to represent your state, you can contact us at nightcallers underscore btr at yahoo.com. That's nightcallers underscore btr at nightcallers.com. And uh, just send us a little bit about yourself. We'll we'll take a look at you. And uh, we have one opening in October. Everything else is built up. So if you're interested, just email us. We'd love to hear from you. Um, anyway, we're 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 back with Christopher. Christopher, you're doing a, an outstanding job, absolutely oh, okay. amazing job tonight. And, and I, I just really, I really am enjoying hearing your stories. Now I have some questions for you. Uh, if you sure. Do you mind if I ask? Okay. Um, on the rock clacking, I've been hearing a lot of rock, uh, a lot of stories about rock clacking over the last few shows. And what I should have been doing is asking them if there's a, a, a pattern to it or is it just clack, 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 or is it clack, 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 and then you hear another clack, 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 or is there any kind of pattern to it or is it just, just clacking? Well, you know, I'll tell you, <laughs> the first ones we got in January did seem to start making a rhythmic sound, and... Um, let's see, one here recently that we got, like a month or two ago, did the same thing, very rhythmic sounding. Um, they're not ever, the ones we've caught have never been the same, and sometimes we have heard some that were just like bang, 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 you know. Um, but then there's some that go on a little bit longer actually have, seem to have some rhythm to it, you know, like uh-huh. it's intentional, you know. That's because I've had some people some people comment on YouTube saying, well, you know, maybe it was a raccoon, or maybe it was Facebook. Anyway, saying, oh, you know, that could have been a raccoon up there, you know, banging something on a rock or whatever. Um, but this, <laughs> what, what we've got, especially the old one, there's, no, I don't think, it sounds like an intentional rhythm to it, in a way. Yeah. I mean, you guys are welcome to listen to it yourself, I and mean, I welcome all comments. Anybody listening to the show, you know, y'all you check it out, see what y'all think, because you know, to me though, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like an intentional rhythm sometimes, especially the one back from January of last year, and then the one we got, like I say, a couple of months ago. I should have should have my videos brought up, I guess, so I could reference to them. But um, yeah, <laughs> but do you have that? Do you have that rock clacking recorded and on any of your videos on Bigfoot Hunting on oh, YouTube? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome! Yeah. Y'all need to Everything go check is. that out. Yeah, uh-huh. we um, one of them. Well, there's been several times, and I'm pretty sure I've noted, I note, noted in, in each video that the word rock clock is caught. Um, let me just, you know, I should probably bring that up. Um, let's see. Um, I'll tell you, well, the one was, like I say, it was last year, so it's going to be back there a ways, or down the list okay. of, uh, of my videos, and that was the first time we caught that. Was like I say, we were only out there. It just started getting really cold, and we split. And that's why, you know, I'm thinking, you know, when I first heard, it, I was like, well, could that have been a person? But I mean, I don't really think there'd have been anybody else out there on a cold January Saturday night, you know. Yeah. Us. And, and, and especially it's another thing, I've sort of shown on one of the videos where we're at, and it's all private property. You know, there's there's and there's no houses real close. There's a few houses on the other side of the hill over there. Um, and I know some of the people, and they're older folks, you know. Now, there's been some new people moving up there that I don't know who they are, but I still don't think it would have been anyone, you know, out there on these nights. And we never tell anyone when we're going, you know. So it wasn't like someone knew we were going back there and did it, you know, to mess with us. And I would see, and like I said, I didn't even know when we first crossed that about rock clacking. I didn't even know that was something that people had recorded when doing this type of of research or investigation. So I I wouldn't think that anybody else around here would know, you know, either. Well, um, it's so interesting because 
back when we did the first night callers, no one ever talked about night, uh, rock clacking. But right. yet recently, when we since the show has come back up and we've been having these researchers on, there it's been almost every week they're talking about rock clacking. In fact, they're thinking that clacking is what's going on instead of wood knocking. Some of them believe that. I believe they're separate because I've heard both and they they're different. Mm-hmm. Um, right. But I, that, that's why I was interested, uh, and I should have been asking the other guests exactly what they were hearing, whether it was rhythmic or whether. Uh, have you have you ever tried clacking rock? Uh, getting oh, us on uh-huh. rock? Right after after we you know realized that's what happened back last January, we tried it several times. But um, see, we're usually we usually set up um, out towards the middle of the field, and we never hear, you know, we can't hear what's going on in the woods. Now, um, the, the, that time in January of, of last year that we caught that, um, the corner was actually not in the woods then. I, there was a, a little little patch of like two or three trees about 20 feet from the wood line, and I had set the GoPro up there facing the woods, and um, and that was, you know, and, and, and so it was, the rock clocks, we actually found, when, when Ren and I, I, I forgot to mention this, when when we did our recreation to see if that was what happened, Brendan actually found the rock that had been hit because you could tell, you know, we have, like, sandstone, and that's what the rocks were, and, and there was, like, a little rock outcropping there that were a uh, little bluff or a little rock bluff, and some had fallen, and some of the rocks slid down the hill. And um, he found the rock that you could tell it, it, you know, it had been hit because it, it looked white and chalky looking. And, and, and you could see it had been hit so many times there. And it seemed to be about the same amount of, of hits on the rock that we heard in, you know, in the video probably. So, um, you know, that was that was pretty neat. We did, you know, and that's, that's what told us, too, that, that had to be what it was then. And uh, when we did the recreation, of course, it, it did sound just like what we had recorded. And that one went on, like I say, though, for about 40 seconds. Um that was the longest one we recorded. Um, the one I was referring to now that, that we just recently caught was um, the video titled Squatches Watching, Rock Clacking, Whooping, and Wood Knocking. We had a whole bunch of activity that night, and that was on August 18th. Um, the, uh, let's see, there, there was another one um, where we caught rock clacks that I noted it here in the title. was We actually went back there, and I took my um, boom box back there with us and played some Pink Floyd for them to <laughs> see what would happen. And uh, we got rock clocks that night. We got some what's so like wood knocks, and then um, oh, and that was uh, also where I showed the video where it, there was possibly a um, so that was that was actually that was back in February of this year um, where it looked like possibly something peeking from behind the tree, but like I said, can't can't be certain. It's probably more likely it's just shadows, but um, it kind of had me excited. Though. I was like, well, is that you know? But as I had to mention it, you know, anyway. Um, let's see. So there was, and then, oh, in January, got, got rock clacks. Um, uh, January 24th, there was one that says Bigfoot likes to rock out in January because it was the previous January, you know, that we first heard the rock clacks. Um, oh, January 17th, we had, we had just set up everything, was walking out of the woods. We were getting ready to pull out into the middle of the field. The camera caught what I think is, may have been rock clacks. It was real quick. Bang, 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 real quick, and then that was it. That was the only thing we caught that night, but that was odd because it was just right after. I mean, you can still hear us out there talking at the truck, uh, you know, outside the wood line, um, and when this happened. So, I, you know, I didn't know if one was near it and made that sound or what, but. Yes. Um, well, that's interesting. See. I have another question for you. Uh, I have done some research in the Kainichi and in that particular area uh, several times, uh, spent the night out there, camped out there. Um, one of the things I've noticed about that area is when night falls, it starts to get very, very windy. Uh-huh. And uh, and when you were talking about the trees, you know, I, I would literally stay in the tent just freaking out thinking a Widowmaker is going to land right on top of my tent. I mean, that wind would be blowing wicked hard, wicked hard. So uh, is it pretty common for it to be windy at night, or was it just those few times that I went there that it was just windy, or is it pretty common up in the mountains there to be windy at night? 
Well, you and know, that's if, double. If so, how do you get around that? I mean, it's hard to hear anything, I would think, uh, with the right. wind blowing like that. Right. See, now, where I'm at here, it's usually not windy at night here. Um, oh, okay. Now, down south down there, though, that, that may be a, a common thing, you know, as, as it um, cools down, you know, especially like in the mountains there, that, that may cause that, that wind, you know. That's um, true, because I was in the southeastern corner of Oklahoma and not where you were at, so, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've been down there. I know where you're talking about it. That's also a really mm-hmm. good spot from what I understand. Yes, um, absolutely. Down- and speaking of that, speaking of that, what about reports? You say uh, that that you've uh, been following reports from that area. Can you tell us about some of the reports that have occurred in the area that you research? Oh, here where I live, I don't know of anyone other than, than my friends that has even knows uh-huh. they're here. I mean, you know, my grandpa okay. lived on this land all his life. Like, my, my great-grandpa bought this land. And, you know, we've lived here for like five generations now. And, and I asked my grandpa if he'd ever seen one or... Or heard anything, you know, and, and you know he he said he hadn't, he'd never seen one, you know, and, um, hadn't heard anything or anybody even talk about it, you know. So um, one thing though he did tell me, which was interesting, and I wish I could ask him, but fortunately he he passed away last July. But um, when I was asking, he did say that there was a group of wild men living up on not the hill right behind our house, but the next hill over, and. You know, but I'm thinking he was probably referring to just basically people living out in the woods, you know, hermits like except maybe a group of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're talking about when he was a kid, so like you know, in the 30s or so, you know. Um, and and but I don't know, you know, I, so I'm not sure if he had seen, you know, <laughs> when I was asking about it and, and we got to talk about it, I think asking, well, was that, you know, had you did you see him or you just heard people talking about him? Right. To know really. Because, you know, that's what they called them back in those days. You know, Bigfoots were like that wild men. You know, they, there was reports in, you know, all over from around the country of, of you know, wild, a wild man attacking the, the, the settlement, you know, the little town or whatever, you know. And so I don't know. Um, and like I said, unfortunately, I can't ask him that. But um, so I, I, he so said, no, he never say, Would you say, Christopher, basically that all the encounters that you've had, um, have been mostly uh, uh, non-aggressive encounters. Uh, well, and well, for, well, I'll tell you. Other what, than the tree. Me, <laughs> right. Well, well, actually, right on, on the trees. One, it was one, um, one day last year, like in the spring or late winter. There, um, we had we, Brent and I had set up everything like we usually do: the strobe lights and the cameras in a in a regular spot. And we had just drove west of there and parked right at the bottom of the of the hill. And we were sitting out there talking, and um, Brendan, I was talking, and Brendan said he heard what he thought was a wood knock. Well, um, four or five days later, I went walking up through there looking, just looking around, and I found a cedar tree that had been put down. I mean, it was it was a green cedar tree. It was not, it, it had been pushed down. The roots had been snapped, and it, it had been pushed down, obviously, and we don't even have black bear here. I mean, not I've uh-huh. never seen signs, tracks, or anything in this valley where I live. On the you know back here, so that that would have been the only thing that could have pushed it down. I mean, other than a bigfoot, because not even a person could have pushed that thing down. You know, uh-huh. I mean, it was a perfectly healthy living cedar tree that was about I don't know five six inches in diameter. And uh, that, and that's what he heard. I think he, he, it wasn't a tree knock. He heard that tree getting pushed down. Yeah, he heard. You know? the, yes, he heard the snap of that trunk on that cedar right. tree. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, it, it actually right or the or the roots because I mean it it pushed it down to where it it didn't break off. It just was pushed down, and the roots were sticking up. And and it's, there's actually even a root still on it. The tree's still alive. Um, but that's what he heard. Now, now see that seems to me to be sort of aggressive behavior, even though, you know, it wasn't near us, but, I mean, I don't know what to call that, really. Um, and and here, let's see, just about, okay, this was um, a month, let's say a couple of months ago. Um, oh, wait, I'm on the wrong page. Um, yes, yeah, we just recently had 
an experience where we drove back. Um, we were actually at my campsite, and um, we uh, had we when we pulled in there, and, and Brent had one of those little uh, gator things, or you know, it's a Polaris, whatever they call theirs. Um, we we pulled into my campsite, and as soon as I hopped out, I saw trees or like a bush out there moving, like something just went through there. You know, I figured I probably, probably scared deer, you know, or something. Uh-huh. Well, about I guess we'd been, we we hung out there in that spot, and I, and I was making whoops and howls and stuff, and we were sitting there again. We were talking, and all of a sudden, a big tree went down. And this was, um, I mean, we actually went and found it, and it, uh, it was a, it was a hickory tree that had been, that was, I mean, it was bigger out as a basketball, or maybe a little bit bigger, you know, in diameter. And it, you know, that was strange. Now that, um, yeah, and I had that documented. We caught that on film. It's called Day Squashing Large Tree Falls, you know, Bigfoot. And um, and when we found, you know, it, it wasn't rotted. There was a breeze blowing that day, maybe five mile an hour wind, and there's just no way that tree. I mean, it just doesn't seem possible. I mean, I'm not saying it's not, but for that tree to have went down, and it even went down into the wind. The wind was blowing from the east, you know, blowing west, and the tree fell east. Now, so if that would have been the wind, a little five mile an hour wind would have pushed this. You know, it was dead. Now it was dead. But it, at the yeah. base, it wasn't rotted. You can see it in the video. It wasn't rotted. So um, what I think was we scored, we may have scared one up right there, and that's what I saw with the bushes, you know, moving when we pulled in, and then it, it wanted us to leave or something and it pushed that tree down. But unfortunately for, for Mr. Bigfoot, I went walking towards it, you know, because I wanted to you know, see if I could catch it on film, you know. And, and then, like I said, we did find a tree, but um, – one thing that was strange about that was we went back there a few days later, a couple of days later maybe. It was raining, and uh, I thought, well, let's go back there to see if anything happens while it's raining. You know, because it would be real quiet. We can kind of slip through there pretty quietly. And um, I walked to that spot where I saw the bushes moving, and I found a, a large wasp nest laying on the ground there. And Oh. Yeah. So <clears throat> I was thinking, was that, you know, was it a Bigfoot, and was it possibly eating the larva out of that wasp nest, you know. And or maybe we in, maybe it got into the wasp nest and the wasp, you know, trying to get away from the wasp that knocked the cedar tree over, possibly. Oh, then, then yeah. I, well, see, I don't know. Cause this was several, this was um, probably ten minutes later that we okay. had been there and then that tree went down. And I was thinking it's like maybe, they, you know, it was wanting us to leave, you know. <laughs> I don't, I, you know, I don't uh-huh. know. This is all speculation. But that is something I found, and I thought that was strange. That right there in the same spot where I saw the bushes moving that day, there was a, a, a wasp nest laying there, and I thought maybe it, it got into it. the larvae. You know, they're real high in protein. So that's true, they are. Um, that's what I was thinking. That could be a possibility, anyway. You know, um, because like I said, I could not think of any reason that tree would go down like that, other than something pushed it down. You know, and snapped it off there at the base. Because I'm talking, this was a tall tree. It was twenty. 25 feet tall. Like I said, it was dead, and that's another thing. It was dead. All the limbs in the top had already fallen out, so there was not even any leaves that that little five-mile-an-hour wind could have caught to make it start swaying, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and it wasn't in the clearing either. It was surrounded by other trees. And there were also trees that were about 40 feet tall that were dead and looked like, could have, you know, I mean, <laughs> they would have went down before this thing would have went down, you know, or at least, yeah. you know, if the wind would have caused that kind of thing to happen. So, I don't know, but there again, well, I walked in there, didn't see nothing, didn't hear nothing, couldn't find any tracks on the ground around it, but it, it hadn't rained recently, so it wasn't like muddy or anything anyway. But I don't know, you know, so it's just, you know, just what we're catching, just want to document it and, you know, let everybody look at it and see what they think, you know, because, yes. you know. Well, if there was uh, one, one piece of equipment that you, if, if, Somebody was going to sponsor you and send you one piece of equipment. What kind of equipment would you want? Oh, you know, I'd love a clear camera. You know, a thermal camera. Yeah, of course. <laughs> now I know <laughs> you're serious. <laughs> right. I mean, what about, you know, yeah. So we can see what's out. I mean, yeah. a few a few weeks ago, well, the one that had the rock clacking on August 18th, I saw eye shine behind us. 
over towards the railroad tracks. Um, and I had my phone, but my phone, I found out after that, um, the phone had a defect. It was HTC One, and I got it last year, and it was um, the M7, and it had a defect in the camera. Because every time I try to take pictures or video at night, it puts this purple haze or this tint over the video, and you can't see anything. And oh, it, so that, I was using it to record it, but you couldn't see the eye shine. And too bad because the, the eyes were big, and they were quite a distance from each other. And the thing was taller than me, even though I was looking at it from about probably 50 yards or so away. Um, it was – and let me kind of explain this way. A train came by, and this train was going by behind us. I heard – all of a sudden I heard something something banging. So I thought, oh, it must be a loose tie, you know, and as that train was going uh-huh. down and it was banging. Well, it stopped, though, before the train finished going by, okay? So I was like, you know, that, maybe that almost could have been like wood knock sounding, you know? Maybe And, uh, and obviously maybe not a tie since it stopped before the train finished going by. So I turned my light, my flashlight, I had like a 500 lumen flashlight, and I was turning it over there. And that's when I caught the, um, I actually caught something that looked, which was, this is weird, I don't understand this, but in the, in between the trees and the clearing, you know, because, of course, there was, you know, leaves, you know, all on the trees right now. And I saw something grayish looking go through a spot there. And I was like, whoa, what was that? So I kept my light shined over there, and that's when I finally saw the eye shine. And as I was looking at it standing there, looking at me, I saw it blink a couple times even. And then I saw one that was, I saw two smaller eyes that were shorter, like like it was looking up at it and then turned and looked at me. And then it was gone. Oh, oh so, my goodness. Yep, and, and didn't have oh, any way to record it. You know, because we just, you know, we don't have a whole lot, we don't have a whole lot of money to buy any equipment, so, you know, it's oh, like. Oh, well, I know that feeling. I absolutely yeah, do. Right. Yeah, I, wow. Um Grass, do you think have any questions for uh, Christopher? Because we're getting, we're kind of getting so close, close to the end, and I wanted to make sure that I wasn't hogging. Let's see if Billy does. Uh, Billy? <coughs> Wake up, Billy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Billy's been I'm, kind of preoccupied I'm, with his daughter. She's not doing, she's not feeling good. Yeah. Yet, so. I've had to hop in and out and check on her. She's running a high fever tonight, so uh, yeah. I'll let I'll let grass jump grass jump in here if he likes to. Well, what do you, what do you think Bigfoot is? Me, I, I mean, compared to, compared to us, compared to like you know some Neanderthals or anything else like that. Well, I think it's like uh, obviously I think it's a great ape. I mean. I, you know, because everybody has all these, even some way out there, you know, ideas of what they are. And um, for me, I'm not going to say any of that stuff is impossible. But for me, the way I want to look at it scientifically is that let's first, let's find out, you know, let's let's get some on, you know, record some, <laughs> you know, possibly get close to some and let's see, you know, what they look like and all that. And, and so I consider it to be just a great day. You know that that of course is bipedal like us, but now human wise, I you know I can't speculate really on that. Is it is it close to being human? Because you know who knows? I mean on that. I mean just like I was watching um, a, a, a documentary the other day talking about how at almost every time through our evolution, there's been more than one you know of our species out there, like say like Neanderthals and mm-hmm. you know and yeah. we'll say. Cro-Magnon Man, and, you know, yeah, they existed at the same time. Yes. And, and and they just even discovered, you know, a couple of new species they didn't even know about here recently within the last couple of years, you know. Um, so could it be, I mean, that's possible. It could be, it could be related to us, but I don't know. I mean, it also could be like like the Gigantopithecus or something, maybe. Um, but, I, you know, first of all, before we go before. I would even want to consider all these other far fetched things. Let's first just get one on video. How about that? Hey, you know, then we can start speculating on well, did they come from outer space? Do they, you know, interdimensional? I mean <laughs> let's get first right. let's see one. Clearly. Well that's the most important <laughs> part is actually get the proof of it. I mean everyone right. can get footprints and all that kind of stuff. Uh, 
uh, tree structures, bends and things like that, even the even your uh, your trees going down. I, I believe in that tree going down. A friend of mine had that happen to him. He actually got it on video in the distance the tree being pushed oh. down, and then he went up and uh, filmed the roof all afterwards. Right. So that kind of thing. Uh, let's get the evidence first of something actually physically in front of a camera uh, right. along the lines of the paddy film first before we go any further, I suppose. Otherwise, right. it's all speculation. I mean, and, and, and you know, for me, and I'm just happy with it being just a, you know, an animal, you know, because, you know, it, it's hard enough just to get people even, some people even buy the idea that they do exist. So, you know, let's, let's stick with the basics first, and then we'll work our way on up, you know, if we, you know, film one walking into a spaceship and flying off, then we can say, yeah, they're from outer space, but. Um, you know, kill it. Let's get one on film. <laughs> you know, see. Exactly. But that, you know, is very hard to do. So I don't really know, you know. Um, I, how, where you know, that's where I, are you uh, going with your research? Uh, it, I mean, obviously you have a passion and a, uh, about Sasquatch, and you want to get out there and and explore this mystery. What is your, uh, what drives you to do that? Are you trying to just, to prove they exist, or do you already believe they exist and just want to learn more about them? What What is your driving force? Well, that's, you know, basically I I know that they're out there, okay, because I've, I've heard them. I, you know, like I say, I believe I saw one when I was 11, and basically I just, I want to, I want to share that with people. I want to share the what we find, and I want them to, you know, because I know, you know, most, a lot of people that watch are, are you know, don't, they're you know, probably skeptical about it, probably don't even believe, you know, it's real, but I want to show just what, what, it, what, it, what happens when we're out there doing this, and what, you know, people who are uh-huh. not, you know, it's <laughs> going to hoax them, what they find, which is not, you're not going to just walk out there and film one, you know, it's not like that. And, yeah, you know, 90% of the time, we're not even going to have anything happen. Um, so I just want to share what what I know with other with other people because I know they're out there, and, you know, I'm not, you know and, and I don't say that I, I, I believe because knowing is better than believing, and I know they're out there, you know, and I just want to share that with people. And I want them to come to their own conclusions so based on what we can, what we, what we find, what we record, you know, um, and to show them you know, the mystery of it as as it is to us as far as trying to get one on film. How do you do that? We've tried trail cameras. Um, the, the the newest thing I've, I've tried, um, which was actually given an idea that was given to me on YouTube, and that was to use, which, well, the person told me to use a battery and hook up one of these um, motion detecting uh, spotlights, you know, like you'd have, like, say, on your front porch corner of your house. Right. Right. And um have that above the GoPro since it doesn't record, you know, a night vision. And because they will not walk in front of a trail cam or if they do, they get out of sight of it, you know, as soon as because like the one I had takes four seconds from the time the it kicks on and, and the IR lights kick on, it takes four seconds for the video to start recording. So that's plenty of time to get out of the front, especially if you notice that light come on and you don't want to be in that light, you know, it gives you plenty of time to get out of the way. So this was a great idea. Um, what I'd actually, I knew they had those solar-powered spotlights like that. Um, well, those were kind of expensive, but I did find one at Walmart that ran on three D-sized batteries. It's not real bright, but if something comes close to that camera within, say, 10, 15, maybe even sort of 20 feet, it's going to light them up. And the camera's already yeah. recording, so bam, as soon as that light kicks on, if there's something in front of it, it's caught, you know. Um, we've tried it a few times so far, and, you know, nothing's triggered it, but, you know, I, we did catch, let's see, the last time I, we heard that rock box, and we're in, in our spot. I know where those rock box are coming from, so next time we go back there and do that, I'm setting up the, the, the GoPro in that spotlight in that area facing those rocks. So, you know, if it happens again, hopefully we'll catch something. But that, to me, was, like, a really great way to do it because, obviously, Trail cams don't work, so you got to think of something else, and that was a, a yeah. excellent idea. Um, I'm so, so I, I was so glad that you figured out that. I, I mean, there's still people out there trying uh, game uh, game cameras. 
and they just they they they're they're obviously too smart to get in in you know. Um, you're going to find out what else is in the area. <laughs> you're right. not going right. to find a Bigfoot on there. Certainly right. not. Um, except now, I did see the one on Finding Bigfoot last season about the, the, the family. I believe they were in Louisiana, and and they their trail came. But now this happened in the daytime though, and it was at quite uh-huh. a distance. And I don't know if y'all saw that. It was where they was pointed at their, their um, hunting blind that they had set up there, and something wow, that was no. calling the bobo was standing right there beside that hunting blind, and they snapped a picture of it. And it was dark. I mean, it was, like I say, it was at too great of a distance to make out any detail, but it's definitely something taller than bobo and completely, you know, the same color, all dark. I mean, so wow. they might work in the daytime if you can have one set up something like that where something, you know, at a distance and if, you know, goes to check it out. But, I mean, as far as at night, yeah, they, I, they see or, you know, they see that out like they John and, and they're, you know, they're not going to go near it. Um, I do have a video, though, where I believe one possibly was behind the camera, um, like maybe kicked on it, jumped behind it, because it makes this um, this sigh. It, it's the only way I can explain it, like a sigh. And prior to that, it almost sounds like in the distance when you turn up pretty loud, it almost sounds like you hear a whistle back way up in the distance there. And, like, like maybe it's it, – this was about 6 in the morning. And, like, maybe when they heard that whistle, it was like, oh, mom, you know, or something. You know, and, and that's what it kind of sounded like to me. That's what it's like an exasperated sigh. Like, you know, it was, it was, it yeah. was being called to come on, and it uh-huh. vocalized, you know. Now, there again, though, you can't see it. So what was it? I don't know. I'm just This is just my speculation on what I know about it. Well, it's good that you're still coming up with ideas. People got to come up with new yeah. ideas. And there's new, exactly. stuff play, new stuff to play with. But we only got right. two minutes left now. Okay. Yes, we are at the two-minute mark, Christopher. Uh, I hate to cut you off, but we are so happy to have you on the show, and you did a wonderful job. And we'd love to have you back sometime. Would you consider that? Yes. Oh, sure. Sure. Oh, definitely. Well, I, yeah. Keep up the good work. Uh, well, I, I you. know that next time you come on, you'll have a lot more to tell us, and you're very inspirational for a lot of those new researchers out there. And uh, it, without research, I really feel that uh, we wouldn't know what we know now if it weren't for people like you and others sure. out there that are uh, getting right. out in the woods and, and looking for evidence and so we thank you so much for coming on. Um, again, I want to tell anyone that is listening to the show, if you're a researcher and you want to re- you want to represent your state on our show during this series, you can contact Nightcaller <laughs> underscore VTR at yahoo.com. Anyway, next week we're having Mike, we're having Mark Hara. I think that's how you say his name. P A R R A, and he is from Ohio. So uh, we'll we'll see you all next week. It's a great show. Let's call it a wrap. And um, I'm going to go ahead and roll the outro. Okay. Thank you, Christopher. Good night, everybody. Good night, night, Christopher. Good night, Bill. Good night, Graz. And good night, Lauren. Good night. (laughs) Good night. And uh, everyone, thanks for listening.